Today we're talking about skin cancer in various forms, its prevention and emerging technology to help identify a patient's risk for recurrence and metastasis. That's right. Most of us are very much aware and familiar with melanoma, but not everybody has ever heard of squamous cell carcinoma, the second most common form of skin cancer, which starts as a growth of cells in the skin. So joining us today to talk about the disease and new testing are Dr. David Cotter from Las Vegas Dermatology and Julie Bain from the Skin Cancer Foundation and a squamous cell carcinoma patient. Welcome to both of you. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you for having us. So Doctor, let me start with you. Let's talk about just melanoma and the incidence behind it. Absolutely, Olga. Melanoma is the big one in skin cancer. It's the one everyone has heard about. And when it comes to melanoma, I have two rules. The first is to never miss melanoma and the second is to never mismanage melanoma. When we look at the incidence of melanoma, it's helpful to know what we're up against. Every year in the United States, there's 100,000 cutaneous invasive melanomas diagnosed. 80% of those are diagnosed as stage one, so we do a pretty good job at rule number one, not missing melanoma. However, an alarming problem emerges when we look at death rates of melanoma. One in four of those deaths occur in patients that were initially diagnosed as stage one. What that says to me is we can do better for rule number two when it comes to not mismanaging melanoma. And to do better, testing is important. And I was reading here, doctor, if you don't mind explaining, we've seen uh, a lot of great success with melanoma genomic testing. Can you fill in the blanks for me there? Absolutely. 10 years ago, all we had were population-based estimates to you know, essentially guess what a patient's risk of death from melanoma was. But in today's world, we've got objective gene expression profiling tests that function like molecular magnifying glasses, allowing us to look into our patient's specific tumor biology and predict with individualized risk assessments what their likelihood of metastasis and sentinel node biopsy positivity would be. Wow, now melanoma might be the most deadliest form of skin cancer, but millions of people every single year have been getting diagnosed with this squamous cell carcinoma. Let's talk a little bit about what squamous cell carcinoma is and annually how many people are affected by it. Squamous cell carcinoma is a humongous problem in dermatology. It's actually the second most common skin cancer in the U.S. and twice as many people die from metastatic squamous cell carcinoma compared to melanoma every year. Does that turn into the other or it's two separate? This is a great question, Montel, and it's one my patients ask me on the daily in our clinic. Squamous cell carcinoma and melanoma are biologically distinct entities. Melanoma is derived from melanocytes, the pigment producing cells in our skin, whereas squamous cell derives from DNA damaged keratinocytes. Keratinocytes comprise the majority of our epidermis. Things like UV radiation, weakened immune systems, wow. age over 50, male gender, fair skin, and so many more risk factors can lead to squamous cell carcinoma, which clinically are a mixed bag of lesions. They don't always look the same. Sometimes it might be a scaly red plaque. Other times it might be a volcano-like nodule. Other times it might be a sore or an open wound. So I always advocate any time a patient has something concerning, get in, see your dermatologist, and just get it checked. Absolutely. Julie, let me bring you in. Okay, so your story is pretty amazing. I was reading here, Julie's had 14 skin cancers. Crazy. 14, yeah. and two of which were squamous cell carcinoma. Can you talk about your journey? I mean, obviously you have that risk factor, the, you know, skin I do, type. But I certainly wasn't expecting exactly. it. Exactly. You know, I grew up with with tanning lotion, not sunscreen, it wasn't good. Um, so yes, I was 25 years old and I had a little sore on my left thigh and I knew that it wasn't healing. And I talked to a doctor who did a biopsy and it was a non-melanoma skin cancer, the most common type. And the doctor took care of it and I thought I was done. And I started protecting my skin more, but it's that cumulative exposure. So it's been a long journey. I just had my most recent one on my calf. That could not have been easy. But the SCC was, was different. That happened in 2012, and I had a little sore on my forehead, and it was crusty, scabby. I thought it might have been from my curling iron. And my dermatologist watched it, and when it started growing outward like a little horn, I guess that's a thing for squamous cell carcinoma, and uh, it turned out that it was. And it was scarier to me because I learned that you can die from it. Wow. And you talk about some of the risk factors, you know, fair skin, but please tell people that people of color, whether they be, you know, Hispanic or African American or black, African, doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. You can they still can get, get it. it too. In fact, squamous cell carcinoma is the most common cancer in African American skin. So doctor, it's really important that patients like Julie, they really need to be aware of their options when it comes to skin cancer, 
risk factor, genetics, treatment, and more, right? Absolutely, there's so many things that can trigger a skin cancer. The first is increasing awareness. So I like Montel that you pointed out, it can affect patients of all skin colors. It's a very sad day when someone comes in with a melanoma on their foot and it was being mistreated as a wart because they thought they couldn't get skin cancer because of their skin color. So I always tell my patients, we have to look everywhere. In terms of knowing what we're up against though, their likelihood of having metastasis when we're talking about squamous cell carcinoma. When we can use gene expression profiling to ask how's your skin cancer going to behave versus how's your skin cancer going to behave, we can get our patients personalized care to make the best decisions to help our patients navigate and ultimately overcome their skin cancer. So Julie, as you listen to this and as an SCC patient, what are your thoughts? Knowledge is power and at the Skin Cancer Foundation we welcome any new technologies that can help fight the world's most common cancer. And you know, I'm, I'm at high risk, so next time, who knows? <laughs> Doctor, I mean, you just briefly covered it, but there are technological breakthroughs happening right now, right? And everybody should be aware of them. Yes, there are. And the greatest one in recent years has been Decision DX SCC, which is a game changer test for our patients with squamous cell carcinoma. Before we had this test, dermatologists would loosely use one of three staging systems, which unfortunately did not do a fantastic job accurately classifying which patients were more or less likely to have a metastasis. Clinically, SCCs are a mixed bag of lesions, and it's difficult to predict which ones will metastasize. With Decision DX SCC, we can really pull out those wolves in sheep's clothing and separate them from the rest of the pack. And this is a fantastic molecular test that allows us to look inside the cells, to use a high-powered molecular magnifying glass, if you will, to ask, how is this tumor going to behave in my patient? So what can a patient expect, doctor, when they're doing this testing? How does it work? From a patient's standpoint, it's as easy as can be. Someone like Julie comes in and we do a biopsy. Our pathologist renders a diagnosis of skin cancer. Then on the back end, with that tissue that's already sitting in the lab, not benefiting Julie or any other patient in any way. It's just shelved. Castle Biosciences is able to extract RNA from that tissue that's already banked in the lab. No need for an additional biopsy or another procedure. And they extract RNA and look at the expression of 40 different genes for squamous cell carcinoma, 31 for melanoma, to accurately predict our patient's individualized risk of metastasis. So Julie, what advice would you give other people out there who are concerned about possibly having skin cancer? I would say to keep an eye on your skin, get to know your skin, and if you see anything new, changing, or unusual, which is our Skin Cancer Foundation catchphrase, please see a dermatologist. Don't go into denial. When you catch them early, they're relatively easy to treat and cure. Wow. So Julie, bottom line, it's really important to advocate for yourself, right? Absolutely. So really, you know your own skin, you know if something isn't right, not healing, um, and you need to develop a relationship with a dermatologist, especially if you are at risk. So like Julie said, knowledge is power. There's never been a time in my clinic where more information wasn't valuable. Every single day I make decisions that impact patients' lives, and I truly believe that having all of the information available to make the right decision is the right thing to do. So Julie, where do we go to get more information? The Skin Cancer Foundation has medically reviewed info on all aspects of skin cancer and all types at skincancer.org. Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you for your story, doctor. Thank you for the knowledge and the information. And before we leave, real quick, um, SPF, very important, right? SPF is your BFF. What's the number? What's the magic number? We always tell our patients, 30 or greater, higher is better. There you go. Higher Thanks better. again. Absolutely. Appreciate it. And for more information on Decision DX Melanoma or Decision DX SCC, visit Castle Biosciences dot com forward slash skin cancer. And of course, as always, you can go to our website, thebouncingact.com. We'll take a little break. We'll be back right after this.